Hello. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, the last session of the day, uh, I'm sure you guys must be tired, uh, but we're going to talk about um, how you can improve your overall equipment efficiency using AWS solutions. But let's start with what is an AWS solution. Uh, AWS solutions are solutions that are built by AWS. They are well-architected, open-source solutions using AWS services. One of the things that customers have been telling us is that uh, all these 170-odd services that we have are great, but we need some more help to bring these together. So these are solutions that are open source for exactly that reason. Uh, there, is, uh, there are solutions for all type of verticals. We're going to be talking about manufacturing as a vertical specifically in this session today. So Amazon Virtual Andon is actually a solution that was built for the Amazon warehouses and it is used in the Amazon warehouses currently. And when we realized the benefits that it was giving to the Amazon fulfillment centers, we decided to open source it so that our customers can benefit from it too. Uh, there's another solution that I'll be talking about today uh, called the Machine to Cloud Connectivity Framework. This was primarily built for connecting machines and equipments on, in factories uh, to the AWS cloud. So, this means that connecting machines with legacy protocols such as OPC DA, uh, SLMP for Mitsubishi PLCs, Siemens S7 PLCs, so on and so forth. So the demo that we're going to do today is a combination of these two solutions, and we'll walk through the architecture at a high level. Uh, so this is the architecture for the Amazon Virtual Andon. Uh, there are three key components of this uh, solution. Uh, one is the web client, which is what you would deploy at the associates. The second one is the web observer, which will be used by engineers or factory flow managers that you have. Uh, and the third one is the management console. The management console is what you would use to set up what your factory looks like. So when you deploy the solution, the first thing you'll do is you'll go and set up what your factory looks like. Uh, once that is set up, then the web client and the observer will be activated so that you can actually collect data from the shop floors. Uh, we'll go through the architecture uh, towards the end of the session. We'll first just run the demo. Okay, uh, so when you deploy the solution, as I said, uh, you'll get a web console uh, similar to this. The web console uh, that you see here is actually the management UI. This is where you set up what your factories look like. Uh, within each factory, you can set up so let, let's just go to one of the factories here, so site one. Within each factory, you can set up different areas. So areas could be things like north, south, east, west, floor one, floor two, so on and so forth. Within each of these areas, you can set up processes. Uh, so processes in factories usually are things like packaging, inbound, outbound, so on and so forth. So within each area, you can have multiple processes. And within each process, you can have events that are likely to occur. So let's say that I'm at a packaging station and uh, the events that occur at a packaging station are you run out of tape or you run out of packaging material, so on and so forth. Uh, so you can set up these events, which will then appear on the associate UI once you log into the associate UI. For each of these, you can set up uh, SMSs and emails so that notifications are sent whenever any of these issues occur. So this is the management UI. Uh, I'll quickly flip to what we call as the client UI. Uh, so the client UI is what you would de deploy on the shop floor. This is what your associates will have access to. Uh, so I'll just go to the same site one. I'll select the work area as area one for now. Uh, choose a process, packaging, a station, and a device. Um, so station and devices are uh, within each work area. You can have multiple stations and devices. Now, the events that you saw earlier that you set up are displayed uh, once you choose all of the devices. And these, like let's say that I'm at a packaging station and whilst packaging, I'm running out of boxes. So I can't do the work that I want to do and I need an engineer or I need someone to come and actually replace the boxes. Uh, so as an associate, I would basically click on running out of boxes. This will send a notification to the engineer via SMS and email, but it will also show up on the observer. So observer is what the engineer, you, engineers or the workers in the shop flag, factory floor will be viewing. Uh, so I'll quickly show what the observer looks like. Uh, sorry. So I go back to site one in area one, 
and you'll see all the live issues that are occurring on the factory floor. So right now I just chose on device three station one that I'm running out of boxes. So as an engineer, uh, so as an engineer, once this issue, once you see this issue, you go to the station, you go and see what the, the to fix the issue. Now this is just the first part of what we want to do with the solution. Uh, the second part of this is how you connect your machines to the same system so that they can dynamically report issues based on different thresholds within the factories. Uh, so for that, we've got a demo where uh, we're just going to plug in a Raspberry Pi, uh, which has uh, a temperature sensor on it, and you know, which has a temperature sensor on it that is now linked to an Andon light, uh, as you can see over here. And what, what I'm going to show is two things. Uh, the first thing is how do you get data from the sensors? Uh, this is what we call as using the machine to cloud connectivity framework. Uh, and then how you connect the machine to cloud connectivity, the data that's coming from the sensors to the AVA. So if I go back, uh, I'm going to go into AWS IoT Core to start with and just clear this. So the machine to cloud connectivity framework allows you to connect to machines with different protocols. Over here, I'm connecting a simple temperature sensor, uh, which is on a Raspberry Pi hat, uh, and I'm going to basically retrieve that information. So to be able to do that, uh, what we have is a, something called as a job. So you create a job where you basically define the metadata about the job, so what type of, what's the name of the job, the version of the job, so on and so forth. You set up the data parameters, so how frequently do you want to read data from the sensor and how frequently do you want to push it to the cloud? Uh, you define the attributes that you want to read. So for now, we just want to read the temperature from the Pi hat and any connectivity parameters that you might have. So over here, I'm just passing sense hat, uh, which is sending data over Ethernet, over UDP. And this job will then be submitted to an IoT topic, M2C to job slash submit. Uh, once I do this, it will. Uh, it will send this information to Greengrass, which is deployed on the Raspberry Pi. That will then pull information from the sensor and push it back to the IoT cloud. Let me just try this. I've just lost connectivity. Give me a second. Okay, well, whilst this reboots, uh, I'm just rebooting the Raspberry Pi uh, to get the data. Give me a second. Uh, but whilst this reboot, uh, what I will show you in the meantime is I'll go back to the client and the observer that is set up for this scenario. So over here, I've got Aria as the site name and the Raspberry Pi as my device uh, that I'm connecting to. I've got two events that can occur. One is temperature being too high, second one being temperature to being too low. Um, and from the observer side, which is the bit on the right here, I'm going to be monitoring the issues. Uh, so once the temperature gets crosses a particular threshold, which in this case is about 20 degrees Celsius, uh, it will basically give a warning that temperature is too low. So let me try submitting the job again. Okay, uh, so this time it's worked. Uh, so you can see that temperature is coming back from the, uh, from the sensor that was connected to the Pi. Uh, currently it's at about 32 degrees Celsius. Um, what we'll do is we'll try to mimic reducing the temperature to below 20 degrees uh, by just spraying deodorant on it. Uh, that should help reduce the temperature on it. If you see the temperature now, it should be about uh, 11 degrees. Uh, you can see the Andon light has gone red over here. The temperature is coming back to normal, but it's about 11 degrees right now. And if I flip back to my AVA, it shows that temperature is too low. 
which you can acknowledge or which you can kill. Uh, once you've done that, and once, you, once an engineer has come and fixed the issue, you can go back and say that the temperature too low issue has been fixed, which will then update the Andon light and uh, the, so if I just go back here and do this, you can see the Andon light's gone green on the sensor, everything is back and the temperature should be back to above 20 degrees Celsius, which was the threshold that we had set. Uh, so with this, we just wanted to basically show how you can connect sensors to the Amazon Virtual Andon. Uh, the Amazon Virtual Andon can be used in two ways. One being the way where you have the tablets deployed at the associates and the associates giving a notification to the engineers of an issue. You can track issues in real time. Uh, but what you can also do, and if I can go back to my UI, is view a history of all the issues that have occurred across your factory floor. So that multiple ways to do that out of the box from the solution itself. So over here you can see a few graphs that are showing all the issues that have occurred across the last seven days, across the last 24 hours, what the total st station downtime has been because of all the issues that have occurred. Or you can also see a historical list of all the issues that have occurred so far, export it as CSV, so on and so forth. Uh, so these are solutions that are currently available on aws.amazon.com forward slash solutions, uh, which is this portal here. Uh, you'll see a series of solutions here, including for, for multiple verticals, as I said, but if you just filter by manufacturing. Here, uh, you'll see a few solutions here, but you'll see the Amazon Virtual Andon and the machine to cloud connectivity framework that I was talking about earlier. Any questions? Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your evening.